that we in the church should hear preaching and teaching. Now, I as a pastor also submit myself to preaching and teaching. I listen to CDs. I watch uh, various DVDs. Uh, I read books continually. I can't get enough. Well, you have to be the same way. He's created the church for that purpose. Right here it says it. Preach the word instant in season and out. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all patience. In other words, you don't do it with a condemning uh, anger, meanness type of spirit. You do it with patience because why? I don't know about you, but my head's a little hard. It's a little thick. I have to hear it a few times before it registers and I change. Uh, just the way it is. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. God. Well, the third way uh, that he corrects us, first way is, is get into the Word yourself. Right. Study the Scriptures. Second way is get into church family and fellowship. Uh, uh, listen to the Word of God. Third way is in that church family, you're going to receive fellowship. You're going to bump elbows with people. Hallelujah. And God's going to use that to give you a little correction here and there. Hallelujah. Why? Not because He wants to harm you or make you upset or make you not come back to church, but because He wants to keep you on track. He wants to keep going the right direction. He wants to keep your finger out of light socket so you don't get shot. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look in Luke, Luke chapter 17. We'll see this. Praise the Lord. Y'all still with me? Yes, sir. Amen. Luke chapter 17, verse 3. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, correct him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he trespass against you seven times in a day, seven times a day turn to thee, saying, I repent, you are to forgive him. That's right. Right. Yep. Amen. But the key is here that. In rubbing of elbows and mixing and mingling, you're going to have some issues come up and arise. Mm -hmm. Well, the weak one leaves. Just says, forget it. Uh -huh. right. I'm yep. not coming back anymore. I don't like it. Right. Right. Yep. Tracy was mean to me. Right. Well, I'm not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Tracy would never be mean oh. to anybody. I just use her example. She's on the front row. Front row takes the abuse. But you hear what I'm saying? People do this. Yes, sir. Don't come back. Well, that's Satan coming to steal, kill, and to destroy. God is issuing some loving correction right. if you receive it. It's not easy to receive it. No, sir. But it's there for that reason to keep you on the right track. The same same passages in Matthew 18. Those are a little clearer. Go to Matthew 18. Um, you, many of you are familiar with that. chapter 18 with the prayer of agreement. Well, right before that, it's talking about church discipline. Matthew 8, 18, beginning at verse 15. Moreover, if your brother shall trespass against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Don't go call everybody on the phone. All right. All right. All right. You know what so-and-so did to me? Yeah. That's not what he said. Go talk to him. If he'll hear you, you've gained your brother. If he will not hear you, then take with you one or two more. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Verse 17, if you'll neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. There is a church order. Uh, it's not pleasant. And uh, it's not uh, really uh, something that we like to talk about. But nevertheless, if somebody just refuses to get right, and they're destroying other people along the way. It has to be dealt with. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Now, when I was a very young man um, in, in the Lord, I was pastor in a church in Alabama, and I had a couple come into my service, and the, the, the lady's parents was my best people of the church, and they gave the most, they were the most supporting, but the daughter was living in sin with the boy, and they were living together. And they came into the church. This is when I was very young in the Thanks to the Lord. And uh, they were worshiping God and praising God in the church. And all the people were seeing that. And they knew they were living. It's a very small town. They knew they were living together. And so I went to them and I said, you have a choice. You can either get married. You can either separate from living together and continue to come to church. Or you can not come back. 
Well, I'm softened and mellowed a lot. I know. <laughs> but that is a true story. And through that, her dad got saved. Because he said, at that time he was not strong in the church. He was coming, but the wife was a strong one. And he said, some preacher that will come into this town and be that forthright mm -hmm. and not afraid of nobody, I'm going to that church. Right. Well, God took it and used it for his glory, but it's not the way I would handle it today. Right. Okay, I would go to them and try to help them, but I would not be so blunt to say, don't come back. And I did do that. But anyway, they did get married and everything was well. And Thank God. <laughs> However, this talks about a procedure similar to that, just not quite so blunt. God is very patient, long-suffering with people. Hello? Hello? Are you with me? Okay, so anyway, there is first correction by the Word of God. You're, that's the main way. Study, get it, don't do crazy things, you'll be okay. Do the will of God. All right? That's the first way. Second way, if you, if you don't do that, well, the preacher's going to preach about it. And you're going to think he's talking just as you. He read your mail. But he didn't really read your mail, or she didn't. They don't really know you or what you're going through. It's just God telling something, correcting. Okay? Then if you still don't receive that, then it can get uglier. Somebody may say something to you. Somebody may confront you and say something to you. And uh, you have to be real careful, saints, in doing that. I don't suggest you do that just flippantly. Nope. You have to be very cautious because you'll hurt somebody and drive them off real quick. So I'm talking about God's way and being led by God. You be sure you're mature in the spirit before you go around. If, if you got the board out of your eye, then maybe you can pick it out of somebody else's. Amen. 